Hi everyone. So I wanted to do a video today about my career really and about how I believe I have manifested myself to where I am today. I mean manifestation is huge and a lo load of people will say, well no it's a load of rubbish. But what it is, it's about working with the right mindset, you know, the tools that we have been given that we can use is in our mind through positive thinking and cutting out the negativity and really believing you can achieve everything you want and working with the universe to fulfill all your dreams and desires. So let me tell you my story. So I'm Paula. I am a hairdresser. I have been for over 20 years and I love the position I am in right now. As a child, I wasn't very academic. I would go to school and I enjoyed school, don't get me wrong, but it was just wasn't for me. The lessons and all of that, I was like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with all of this. I'll listen, I'll do my best, but this isn't really for me. I knew I was never going to go to university and things like that. But I wanted to be a dancer or a teacher because I'm very creative um, but then at the same time, I think because I loved my teacher, I wanted to be like her. So I would set my teddies and my dolls up in my bedroom and haul my brother in and do the register and set little tasks. Um, and as time goes on, you know, you just kind of get on with your day to day school life and doing everything, everything da daily. So fast forward to, I think I was 14 and my parents said to me, right, you need to get a job. You're wanting things. You can go out, you can learn, you can earn your own money to get the things that you want. So I got myself a job down as a Saturday girl at the local hairdressers. Loved it. It was the best thing ever. I literally got to talk all day long and all I had to do was make a few coffees, sweep up, do a bit of cleaning and wash people's hair. And I got to talk, I got to listen, I got to be around people. And I knew when I looked at the hairdressers that I wanted to be them one day. So I did my exams, didn't do great, admittedly, didn't pass a lot of them, but I did my best. But I think it was because my heart wasn't in it and I knew I wanted to be a hairdresser. And at that point, you just needed a job as an apprentice and they would take you to college one day a week and you would do it that way. So after the exams, I got myself an apprenticeship at a salon and I went to college one day a week. I got my qualification and I was still so excited by it. I mean, I pushed and pushed and pushed and got myself through it as fast as I possibly could so that I could get out there and get on to people's hair and start the colouring and the cutting and just doing what I was seeing them do every day. So I qualified and then at the time, you didn't have to go on and do your level three. It was a choice, but obviously it was funded. And my boss kind of said to me, look, if you only need your level three if you're going to own a business one day or own your own salon. And do you want to do that? And at the time I was like, well, no, I don't think so. I just want to be a hairdresser. So I just want to get out there. So she was like, right, OK, we won't put you in for your level three. We'll think about it later on. Let's get you out on the floor. So obviously time goes on, life goes on. I'm building on a full client, you know, clientele, loving my job. And then... I had a house and a boyfriend and I got pregnant. So I had to come out of hairdressing for a while. I had two children and kind of worked a little bit part time, but stepped out of the game a little bit. Um, then they got to the age where they could go to nursery and school. So I got myself another job and started back again. Um, and then they got a little bit older and I kind of stopped and asked myself, what now? What am I going to do now? You know, where is the future of my career and where do I want this to take? Do I just want to be working my socks off to line somebody else's pocket for my whole life? Not really. So I knew I wanted to be the teacher still. So I'll be a hairdressing teacher. Like, how amazing would that be to be able to teach the thing that I love to other people? Um, so that really excited me. So I did a bit of research into it. Well, you need your level three which I didn't have. The course was three and a half thousand pounds, which with two children, bills to pay and life, you know, there was no way I was ever coming up with that money. And if I had that money, it was going on my kids and a family holiday or doing some work around the house or a car. It wasn't, I could, was in no position to be able to spend that on a course for myself, especially as I couldn't justify it enough because it meant 
I was just getting a certificate for something that I already did because I was quite highly experienced at that point from my years of working. So it was like, oh, okay then. But then as the years went on and the assessors kept coming in and working with the learners of the salon that I was in, I just kept, I just want this. I started doing a little bit of voluntary work down at the college and the hunger just grew inside me. All I wanted was that. You know, the kids were getting older, starting to get a little bit more independent and I had to start really, really thinking. So I kept asking the assessors, right, I want your job. How am I going to do this? And they're like, right, you need your level three. Right. Can I not do it without my level three? No, you need if you're going to teach us, you need to be advanced in this. So I was like, Ugh. and then also to get on the level three, you need a maths qualification. Well, I didn't pass my GCSE in maths. I think I got a D or an E. So that wasn't enough to get me even on the level three itself. So there was always this, you know, money and grade blockage in my way. But still I kept going and then it was just kind of like a dream. I want this, I want this. But one day I might have the money to be able to go and do it. But right now I haven't, but I just want it so bad. Um, so one day I had a lady in. I'd never done her hair before. And we're getting talking and she is the kind of trainer, assessor, kind of high level person at a college where I live in the hairdressing department. So I was like, oh, I've always wanted your job. I'm so jealous. This is, you know, like, but I haven't got my maths and I haven't got my level three. And I know that's all, you know, all I need to start the training, the teacher training process. But, you know, right now I haven't got the funding. And it was like, mm, yeah. So conversation moved on, did her hair, happy, she left. By well a week later she phoned the salon and I was like oh no she's not happy with her hair I've done something wrong what's going to happen so you're nervously like hi are you okay she said I want to make an offer to you we will fund your level three advanced hairdressing diploma if you can prove to us that you can get your maths Functional skills, I think it is, level two. Like, yeah, but I haven't got the three and a half grand to do the course. No, we will fund it for you. Yeah, but then I'm going to have to pay. No, we will fund it for you. Right, okay, so you're going to put me on this course that costs three and a half grand. I have to pay nothing. All you want me to do is get a maths, like GCSE or a pass grade. And she was like, yes. That's all you have to do. We want to encourage you. You know, there's a place for you if you want it. If you can prove to us that you can do it. Like, what? What are the chances of that? Of that lady coming to me that day, me giving her that information, her then going away and coming back with the free course that's going to cost me nothing. So I was like, yes, sign me up for this right now. So basically, she said, right, all you've got to do is you go to college and you'll, these are the times where the maths, where you go and do a bit of theory and then you'll sit in the exam. I was like, no, put me in for the exam. She was like, well, you haven't done maths for a long time, Paula. You know, I mean, at this point, I'm 35. She's like, you haven't done maths for a long time. Maybe you need a bit of a recap. And I was like, no. And I struggle with absorbing kind of theory work. I'm a practical person. I need to be doing it to kind of learn it and take it in. Um, and the same, if I'm sitting in an exam, I find that if I can read the answer out to myself, I can kind of take hold of it and figure it out a lot easier. So I was like, just book me in for the exam. You know, I'll do it. I'll pass it. So she was like, OK. So as she set me up in this little classroom and she sat by the door and I sat and did this exam. And I was like, right, I am going to pass this. I have to pass this because... I will never get this chance ever again where I won't have to pay for this course. So this isn't a, am I going to pass? This is, I have to pass and I will pass this. Well, it was hard. You know, there was a lot of problem solving and things like that and all the numbers and the pie and all of that. But I did it. I felt a bit drained and I went home and I was like, I don't think I've done very well. Well, then she phoned me about two weeks later and I was driving along and I, so I couldn't answer the phone and she left me a voicemail just saying, look, Paula, give me a call. It's about your maths exam and the course. I just want to talk to you about it. So I was like, oh, great, that don't sound good. So I phoned her up when I got home 
I passed. I passed the maths exam. She was like, congratulations. We're giving you the course. You've, you've passed. You've done all you need to get onto the course. It's yours. So, oh my God. Like, that happened. If that wasn't the universe manifesting my dreams at its finest, I don't know what is. So I went on, I did my level three and basically because I was doing it every day anyway, it was literally just going through the theory exams and then having the assessor come out and witness what I was doing um, to mark off. So it was all kind of done and everything like that. And then I went on and I did my education and teaching course. I went and did my assessor's award. I then went on and did a few little side qualifications to top up my CV on the same time. And I'd set myself a five year goal. So I was 35 when this happened. And I said, right, by the time I'm 40, I am gonna have the qualifications that I need that when that job comes up, I can say, yes, I have everything you need for that job. I'm applying. So all that has happened. Um, and now we are in the position where I am able to apply for jobs. And I am 38. I did it in three years, not the five that I'd set myself. Three years. So I'm now 38. I'm two years off 40. And I've done it. I've done everything I wanted. So now I have the right qualifications and everything needed to apply for that job now i'm not worried about the job obviously we're just coming out of lockdown so everything is a bit up in the air the job fronts a little bit you know the colleges and that are figuring out but i am not worried about it you know i will apply when the job comes up but i know that the universe completely has my back here and i know the hours i want to work I know the college I want to work at that will fit in with my life because now I'm fully self-employed mobile hairdresser and I'm literally full, you know, it's, I, my business is just so, so, such a success, it's everywhere I want it to be, I feel like it couldn't get any better and so I now want to mix them both together but I'm so sure of the hours that I want and what I want to do in my teaching that I know it will happen for me. I am not worried at all. As soon as the time is right, and as soon as my time has come to get on that, you know, to apply for that job and get it, it's going to happen. It's not if or when, it's, it's going to happen. So, I mean, if someone had said to me years ago, right, don't worry, I know you're upset, I know you want to go on that level three course to get to where you want to be, but the universe will sort you out. The universe knows you want this, knows you dream of it, it's going to sort it out for you, it's going to give you it all, you know. And I'd be like, there is no way I can dream this and send it up to the universe and the universe with some positive thoughts is going to pay three and a half grand for a, for a college course for me. Um, but it did. It actually did. It actually happened. So now that is the power of manifestation and belief and mindset. And if I can do that, then you can too. We've just got to turn it on and believe in it all. And believe me, everything you want can be yours. And it will be. Give yourself a little test and try it out. Thanks for watching. Bye.